to share my screen because I do have a, a presentation. So we're gonna go here, share and present. Okay, Just everybody's okay. You can you can see the presentation because I can't see myself right now. All I've, is everything good to go? Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, so this is me. Thank you so much for that warm welcome. I'm uh, thrilled to be at the at the Guild. And I spent some time with Kathy over Zoom, uh, maybe early September, and she showed me, I mean, I don't know a lot about, I didn't know a lot about weaving and spinning and Bob and, and the language and the lingo, but now I do. So we spent probably about an hour together. So I hope to incorporate um, because I wanted to know exactly the setups and, and we really had a, a, a great connection there. So this is me and thank you so much for that warm welcome. A little bit about me, I've been, as you, thank you for that. I've been a chiropractor about 18 years. He said I have four children under the age of 13. I have um, three boys and a girl. And I, I just before we got on here at 6.30, I incorporated just a quiet meditation. My children live half with me, half with their dad, and they're not here today. So I have a dog. She may bark. Um, her name's Roxy, but she uh, she may have to go out, but she's, she's all right. She can wait. Um, and I did a meditation just before we started. So I love uh, to create. I love to paint. I love to read. I love to get that part of my brain going. So I will take some questions at the end. So if you want to um, jot down as we're going, um, I'll, um, I'll take some questions at the end. But my goal today is to really keep it simple, keep it very relevant to the weaving, the spinning, the knitting, the language that I learned from Kathy, I'm going to make analogies to what the gifts that you do and, and relate it to chiropractic. People are, I, I do this with every, whether it's profession, whether it's hobby, whether it's, I have a gift of bringing your language and making what I do relevant to you. And just, so I, I hope I'm on point with that, but, um, Okay, let's go. Let's get to it. So you ladies and gentlemen, pardon me, you, you, I am sure, spend hours and hours at your spinning wheel or at your loom hunched over. So the concepts that we that I want to begin with in that in our spine, if you look on the left, we should have three curves. So when we see those curves straightened out as exemplified by the bones you see on the left, that is a spine that's lost those curves. So it is a straight, a straighter spine because we've lost the curves and a straighter spine is really a weakened system. It's, it's um, a collapsing. We won't fall over at all, but we become very, very inefficient. You can see that that head is much farther than the pelvis or the top of the spine should be in line with the pelvis. But when we're lunched over like that, um, even though we're sitting, the brain still has a hard time navigating in space and we become very, very inefficient. And if I, I found that other picture and I don't know if it's very relevant, but again, it just shows you kind of what's going on underneath. So we should have a lump, a curve in the low back, a curve in the mid back and a curve just like an S shape. So wherever, wherever that head goes, all else fails forward, all else follows in a sense. So you have the shoulders roll in and I did catch somebody about that shoulder surgery, but, um, those shoulders roll in, that rib cage lurches forward, the hips even change their positioning, we're hunched over, we're, le we're leaning forward, and it really all starts in that neck. And I wanted to bring up, um, there's something that can happen when that head remains forward for a period of time, we get a dowager's hump. So a dowager's hump is that bump that forms at the base of where the neck meets the upper back. And it can be um, 
many ladies say, I, Dr. Laura, I have this thing happening here. I wear a scarf because I just, I just don't like how it looks here. My mother had it, my grandmother ha had it. And that's when that head has gone forward for so long, carrying, well, the neck has gone forward for so long that head has a certain weight to it. And now we have a lever and that point it's just not supposed to carry the weight of that head so forward so for so long. And we're going to come back to a, a, the key point in, in chiropractic is motion of the spine. And when the spine lurches forward, we stop that motion. And that's why we get that. It's just called a dowager's hump. I just wanted to, I thought maybe it would be, um, and maybe some people have some questions about um, that. But so when we're in this front position, people say, and whether you're spinning, whether you're sitting at your desk all day, whether you're, you have sat at a desk for 38 years, now are retired and now spinning, or even we're a teacher or we're in childcare, that a lot of our daily, or we drive for a living, a lot of our daily life, regardless of our profession or creative outlet, is in this flexed forward position. So we become so stiff and those front muscles become so overworked. And it's not overworked like I'm talking about going to the gym and, and really building up those, but you can just see from the postural positioning that they become shortened. They become contracted. We call this the body armoring position. And I'm not saying that we're that we feel stressed out, but the, the physiology is ready to do battle, ready to go in because everything at the front is contracted. Now, what happens at the back? That's the question. So if we have shortened, contracted muscles that are always firing, pulling those shoulders in, caving forward the ribs, holding the head over the pelvis where it shouldn't be for an extended period of time. The muscles that go, so do you see the red fire? They look like uh, lightning bolts, whatever. Along the backside, you have muscles. Their job is to hold our head upright. So they become weakened because the front ones are dominant or they pull so forward. I say those, they're called extensors or they, they just extend our body upright, like hold us upright against gravity. They become out of balance. They actually become to atrophy. Atrophy means they learn not to work. This is why uh, as we age, or I say, if you know a great aunt who is just that, that in that flex over position, those muscles have really atrophied over a period of time. And I'm gonna give you a, a clue as to why that's happened. So we can't stand tall, even if we tried. We feel hunched over. Those muscles are simply not engaging. Like a pattern of a quilt, they're just not engaged. I'm not talking strong like Arnold Schwarzenegger as to how many push-ups you can do or how many you know, back uh, extensions you can do. They're simply not woven like your, your, your fiber crafts. They're simply not woven together and they, they become very loose. I'm sure in your crafts, you want as, if, well, maybe in some of your artwork, you want your stitches to be as close together. Maybe there's a technique that you want loose loops as well. I'm not sure, but the, the analogy I'm trying to make is loose stitches at the back is not what we want. Uh, it's really easy to pull apart. Like I said, you will not fall over, but the body is going to do all it can. Uh, it may steal from other pathways to make sure that we don't fall over but we lose the strength against those front muscles because the front is so dominant. So try as we might, we can't stand up. And many times we see it in our pictures. I have people like I've, I've all the time say, Dr. Laura, I, 
and my pictures are really bothering me because I, I'm, I'm more forward than I was even six months ago. I mean, you add the amount of time we've been on Zoom, the amount of time we've been home, the amount of time, not only you spend at your, your spinning wheel, but just the, the sitting for maybe years of time, they say, but even in the last 24 months, two years, 18 months, with all of the stress in our body and in our life, that we see us going more forward and more forward at a very, very faster rate. Maybe others see it in you. Um, or maybe we see it in ourselves. So it's that front dominant pattern. And we're gonna come back to what a chiropractor can do. Something else has to happen before we we can ask of those back muscles to come back from vacation and actually engage in a pattern before. There's a one thing that has to happen, so key, but we're gonna come back to that. Okay. I've heard, I was just, I, I made this presentation a while ago, but I, I was neat to be on at 6.30 and just listen to how much joy we get or you get out of the creative process, which is amazing for the brain. Again, in the last 24 months, we have had to find joy within ourselves. We've had to find connection points, not only with, with ourselves being in our house, but with others too. So it's, um, I, I was talking to Kathy and she said many people, and, and perhaps if somebody can um, say yay or nay at the end, but if we've had a stressful day, we work it out at the spinning wheel. Like, man, if my brain, I just got to dial down or dampen the stress response in the body, I have to do something with my hands, whether it's knit, whether it's spin, whether it's, so I don't know if that's true, but it makes sense to me because um, uh, it, it, anything we can do to dampen that stress response and it comes from motion. So. I'm going to come back and then it kind of gave you a little kind of gave it away here. But whenever we're engaged in motion, whether that's hands, legs, um, whether that's exercise, the brain loves motion. It actually loves cross body. So if I have if I'm knitting and I have crossed the midline, my left hand has gone to my right side, my right hand has gone to my left side, my right foot is doing something at the same time. The brain loves that. That is a trigger to dial down the stress response. So what causes stress? Well, we all know what causes stress. Here, if we go back to that head forward position, as soon as our head goes forward, our brain actually launches the stress response. It doesn't matter if we're you know, sitting at a desk, the brain prepares for danger. So it changes what's going on inside. But the body, it was so neat to just to hear um, that kind of the joy, the connection with others. Um, mm -hmm. I often ask patients, if I, if you could, if you came to see me and I, and I could wave a magic feather and you had a goal and you finished the sentence, I'm here, Dr. Laura, so I can finish the sentence. I ask patients all the time. I ask them multiple times a day. I said, please, please finish the sentence so I can. I have people say, so I can sleep, so I can not take medication, so I can, but I heard it spin again, the lady who said the shoulder, so I can spin again, so I can play with my kids, my grandkids, so I can trust my body, so I can relax and not feel stiff, so I can sit at my desk, so I can exercise X, Y, Z, but it was just neat to see and hear from Kathy that uh, this just brings so much joy, connection, whether it's remotely or in person to yourself and others. Okay, so I gave you a little bit of a hint there that there's something that has to happen before we can even ask those back fibers, just like your, your fibers, your fibers of your back to engage again, to get us in the upright position. And here it is. So... I mean, as a chiropractor, my focus is the, the spine and nerve system. So if the brain is stressed out, then the body's stressed out. You have 24 of those bones from the bottom to the top. 
And when the spine moves, and I'm not talking about moving a yoga class or move from your walking to your car or walking to get a, a, a cup of coffee or even stretching, when the spine moves, it sends vital information and it literally lights up the brain. Like if you see on the left, like a thousand light bulbs. go. So it's movement of the individual joints. So healthy joints is a healthy brain, is a healthy body. So if we don't have the motion of the spine, that brain literally goes into a dark cave. I can't adapt to my world. I can't take in any more information. And that's the basis of chiropractic is motion of the spine is information to the brain at the highest level. So that's where those extensors or those back muscles are going to be engaged, be able to send information. They go right to the brain. So when the underneath tissue moves, the extensors begin to bring us back. I explain, I explain it like this. We look for two things. AMD. We look for alignment. We look for motion. And if we don't have those, we have damage over time. So let's look at each one. Alignment. We have to have alignment of those 24 bones from the front to the back. That head has to be over that pelvis. If that head goes forward, like the previous um, pictures, we are in that forward position. That's not optimal alignment. So we look in the front and back way, but we also look from side to side. And motion. So we look for proper and full motion of each of the bones. If we, if we don't have proper motion, we get into what's called a pattern. And I'm going to come back to that in a moment. And I think uh, a pattern is what is, is, is very um relatable to your fiber crafts a pattern so if we don't have alignment just like a car and we don't have proper motion we get damage over time we get wear and tear we can actually um, if we don't have proper alignment that can tell dr laura right away our spine hasn't moved properly because it's the lack of motion that causes the alignment to go awry so we, we get damaged just like the building, we get damaged over time if we don't have proper alignment, we don't have proper motion. So let's talk about a pattern. Weaving, knitting, you follow a pattern. In my world, a pattern is lack of motion and lack of proper alignment. And what the body does is the body follows this pattern, the body embeds this pattern and ingrains this pattern and how can we see, as a chiropractor, how can I see what the pattern is? Well, I mean, I say, th these are things that chiropractors look at, not everybody walking down the street, but with first is posture. Key, if we have alignment side to side, head is front. So we look at the body from the front and the side, and that first off tells me the pattern. We look at how the muscles are maybe tense on one side holding up so we don't fall over. You won't fall over, but it will sacrifice other things. We look at in our office, we have neat testing that tells us what a pattern of that nervous system is. We look at balance. We look at balance with vision, without vision. We look at range of motion. That's just how we look to see if, if somebody can touch the ground with their legs straight. Some people say, oh, Dr. Laura, I've never been able to touch the ground. I say, let me change that perspective. Our spine has probably not moved fully forever. We look at range of motion in the neck and low back. We look for breath. If we think of that posture that we had that head forward, shoulders rolled in, you don't have to be a chiropractor to tell me your thoracic cage or your lung space is compromised. That rib cage and I just physically, structurally can't get that big breath. So I just have people stand up and say, take a big breath. If your head is over your pelvis and forward, I can tell you, you're gonna feel restriction in there. And we look um, just how the body is holding itself. We look at, believe it or not, we look at, at hear voice. 
we look at symmetry. We look at symmetry from side to side. Is one eye higher? Is one shoulder higher? Is one hip higher? We look at head tilting. So as soon as motion ceases, we get a pattern. And that pattern can be even in young babies. As we learn to walk and fall and twist and move and the body holds on to patterning and then we build life on that and it accumulates. We're gonna have to live life. I mean, we, it allows us to live whatever that means, work, children, school, um, dealing with stress the last 24 months, right? But at what expense? So that pattern becomes embedded. It's almost like a bad habit of the nervous system. I'm sure, you know, I like to paint and I get sloppy sometimes and I get, have bad habits. I, there's other things I do that my bad habits come through and that's really what you can think of a pattern is, is, some, is a ingrained way of thinking that the nervous system will always default to unless it's changed. So here's the thing, then we load that pattern, then we stress it out, then we stress out the system. Well, the system's always already weak because it's not moving properly, like a Jenga tower. If you have children or grandchildren, you know what I mean, like a Jenga tower, but I don't want you to think that it's because that bone has moved out of position and all Dr. Laura's got to do is push that back in and it will be golden. It's actually, a, it, it gives us the impression of a weakened system and that's what I want you to think about. It's actually motion of the segments that have lost, that can't go through the full full motion. So it's not a, you know, an, an inch off to one side. It can sure feel like that. But we then load a system that's weakened, that's collapsing. So that's, um, and, and we can't feel a pattern. And here's the thing, but Dr. Laura, I feel fine. And, and that's the fabulous, I'm sure. I'm so glad you're feeling fine. But a pattern is something a chiropractor can, through the testing that I just went through, we analyze, we see what does the body show me, tell me, feel under my hands and pain. Well, we're, I'm gonna just talk about pain in, in a moment. So we're gonna hold, hold that thought, but nonetheless, we stress the pattern that's already weakened. So let's relate the pattern that I see in bodies to patterns that you may see in your fiber crafts, your wool, your, um, so when we, uh, when a pattern starts, I'm going to talk about, I'm going to relate it to your wool first, okay, or your fiber, whichever material you use, you get tangles. And this was so neat that Kathy told me, like I said, I didn't know a lot before we shared some time together early September, we get tangles, right? And they're probably small at first. And you may not even notice the first sign of a tangle. Because what? Well, maybe we're too busy. We weren't paying attention. We, um, you know, we're just, we're, we're, we're getting on with life. And then after a time, it creates something that we can no longer ignore. Maybe it happened too much, too fast. We just got too busy. Well, let's think about what, how that pattern shows up in our nervous system. The nervous system runs your life. So if the brain is stressed out, body stressed out. So that we call that, a, it's, a, it's just a pattern. How can it show up? It sure shoot and can show up as pain. It can show up as pain in the neck because that darn head is so forward, shoulder pain, rib pain, can't breathe, my mid back, my hips, my low back. But pain is a, is a sense that the body said, I can't take anymore. The, the pattern has to be there before the pain shows up. So pain is the last to come. I'm not saying it doesn't last for a long time, but it is a sign that the body is in distress and has reached threshold. And we're going to talk about what threshold is in a moment. Um, and these times the pain goes away, but Dr. Laura is uber happy that the pain's gone away, but I'm not uber, uber happy until that pattern is resolved. So how else can a pattern in the body show up? It's more than pain. And I just gave an example, a couple of examples here about worry, fear, anxiety, headaches, agitation, mood, fears. A stressed out brain is a stressed out body. So if we have proper, I'll repeat myself. I sometimes have a broken record, but if we had proper motion, we have proper alignment, we won't get, I'm not saying no damage over time, but we're, we're keeping our body in the best 
possible shape it can to avoid damage over time. But I can sort of shoot and tell you, if we don't have alignment and we don't have motion, we are on the truck for damage over time. So in, um, it, as you go through your craft, I'm sure there is, you know, small errors, small tangles, and they can build on the last. They are called cumulative. Well, that's a little bit of an inaccuracy in whatever, in your spinning, in your weaving, in, the, in a stitch that you did. And we may not be able to see it with the naked eye, but we build a sweater or we build a whatever you are creating on with that inaccuracy built in. How does that relate to the body? Well, a spine that doesn't move fully is in inaccurately perceiving my, in my environment. So I'm taking in the information, but it's not processing optimally to my brain. We need a spine that moves to do that. So then we build life, we're not a sweater, we're building our life. We build a, a life on that inaccuracy. So where do we start? You know, what can we do? Well, we can, we can probably do nothing. So this is the, the, what do we do when we have damage? Damage over time. Damage over time is a body is that has pushed back with any of the somatic or visceral things I've put on the left-hand side, the headaches, the indigestion, the I can't sleep or the pain. But in your world, it's a, let's talk about a tangle that just started or, it, okay, or has gotten to the point where I can't continue weaving without dealing with this entanglement. So we can, what are our, so what are our options? Well, we can do nothing. We can keep pushing, we can keep weaving, we can keep doing life, we can ignore it. Uh, I thought it would go away are the six most dang dangerous lang words in the English language. In our, if we have a tangle, it will prevent us from weaving, weaving eventually, right? You're gonna have to stop at some point. Eventually it clogs us and in the body, it eventually catches up to us. We may, we may not know it in our 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s. Yeah, well, in the 60s, it catches up to us, right? Because we're doing life too hard in the 20s, 30s, and 40s. What, what else do we do? Okay, we could do nothing until, until we are stopped in our tracks. We could find a temporary fix. And this was so neat. Kathy told me, I can temporarily pull the wool a little bit. That small um, tangle repair will give me just a little more of my fiber that I can work it out. So interesting. So how does that relate to the body? What could I do as a temporary fix? Well, I could have a pill. I could maybe do a lotion. I could take one day off. I could go to a practitioner who I will quote unquote fix me. Very reactive. I have to do something. But I go to five practitioners at the same time because I just need this pain to go away. So we could do nothing. We can find a temporary fix. We could find a long-term solution. So let's let's think about us and our knitting or weaving or spinning. We have to deal, we have to stop what we're doing. We have to deal with the entire, I call it an entanglement, but maybe it's a snag is a better word, or a, maybe you can correct me when I'm off my presentation, you can tell me what it's actually saying. But I have to take time away from the wheel. Maybe I actually have to dissect my technique. Maybe there's something that I'm doing that has caused this and I have to do something differently to prevent it in the future. Maybe I have to ask somebody, what, gosh, I keep getting these knots in my wool, these tangles. And it's probably gonna be time away from the wheel to fix it, correct the problem and repetition, new neural pathways in your brain to say, I did it this way for 25 years, but I gotta do it different because I keep on, keep on, keep on getting the same result. So in our body, we have to first become, be able to become aware. And in the past, gosh, with COVID, so many people have been just uh, disconnected from their body because we've had to just been in that survival mode for, you know, 20, 18, 22 months. We have to be able to look under the hood, you know, and analyze our lifestyle. We have to understand that it's not just one solution. I get all the time, Dr. Laura, this came out of nowhere. I'm 55 and I've, I, again, a different perspective. I never make anybody wrong. 
uh, a different perspective. It's probably the chronicity of all of our choices or things that have happened to us over a period of time. And, and so what, what is my life to date? What is my stressors have been like? Have I been ignoring the small signals? And again, it does take time. First off, awareness, connection to the body, takes time, takes repetition to create a new habit. So I used the word threshold before, and this was this was a point that this was something I really got out of talking with Kathy. That so threshold is how long we can tolerate something, and some people, due to the state of affairs, I know all of our threshold has at times lowered. Uh, but just remember, if we have alignment and motion, we if, uh, we will be less approachable to damage over time. Stressing a damaged system is really a no-fly zone. It becomes rigid and weak and we lose that fluidity. So if you were able to, if we stressed out a system long enough, it's gonna give you indications. Let's say before you were able to sit at your spinning wheel at your loom for six to eight hours, doing, you know, with activating your arms and, and doing your wonderful crafts and now, my gosh, I can only sit for two hours before my arms go numb, my fingers go numb, my low back hurts, my hip hurts. We have to think of stress as multi, multi, multifaceted. It is not just the physical stress of sitting down. It's the emotional, the chemical, the, the you financial, you name it, you put it all in. People say, well, I'm sure some of you say, but I, I was sitting at my loom for eight, eight hours yesterday because I had a project and today I went to do eight hours and I, I was in so much pain right away. We cannot replicate, we can't take one day to the next. It is so much different environmental uh, milieu in which we're acting, right? Just think thresholds like a gas tank. And we've all been challenged in numerous ways over the last um, you know periods of time that we have to do things to uh, keep that gas tank so full. So that's just a, a comment there on threshold that um, I haven't been able to sit at, at long or um, at my loom as I would like to before my body talks to me. So final product, I mean, everything is, we're all beautiful. The body is brilliant. I always say the body is brilliant, not broken. Because many people come to me and say, Dr. Laura, I, my body is failing me. I'm breaking down. And again, I don't make anybody wrong, but I just say the body is brilliant. It has allowed you to live your life. And yes, we may have some entropic changes, which just mean our breakdown is greater than our buildup, but we can absolutely turn that train, uh, turn that train towards health and healing, no matter our age, to create something new. And a chiropractor recognizes that all bodies are brilliant. We have that innate wisdom, given the right circumstances, to create, recreate that um, optimal sweater, if you will, optimal environment for healing. And we're all, I put the dancing because a, a tagline that I use, I, don't, I must use it, well, many times a day, I say, we have the dance of life, right? Whatever that dance is like, whether that's playing with your kids, whether that's spinning, weaving, whether that's working, whether it's working out, whether it's, we got the dance of life to do. So we can express life, so we can experience life. And chiropractic may be a piece of that puzzle that people may have never, um, never wanted to go to, told never to go to, uh, think we're very scary people. You've seen my picture. I'm really not a scary person. Not that I've been told. Um, so just, to, just to, that it may be a piece of that puzzle to healthy brain, healthy body, motion of the spine so we can dance with life. So I am going to have, Laura, this is where I'm going to count on you. There's two exercises. Well, actually, there's four. I'm sending around a YouTube video that I have done. Um, I believe there's two or four exercises in there to strengthen those extensors. But remember, the first thing that has to happen, horse before the cart is that spine has to move. So really, um, I mean, 
if people come to me day one, Dr. Laura, what else can I do? I know, you know, coming here is fabulous to get my spine mobile and moving. Can I do exercises? I am not uh, a huge fan of giving exercises right away because we have to get that spine to move to get those extensors on the, yeah, yeah, uh, on the loom. We have to get the, them, the fibers engaged. So, but I thought I would give these to you nonetheless because people are really want, what can I do at home? Um, so in the comments is going to be my, I have a YouTube channel, but it is me explaining two very easy exercises that you can incorporate to, I call them my stand up straight exercises to counter the flexor dominance, to counter that pulling forward. They're very easy. All you need is a straight wall, which I'm sure you all have. That was a joke. So you can use those and, and please feel free. I do informational videos all on my website, all I'm sorry, 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 all on my YouTube channel. So if you have the link that's going to take you right to my YouTube, spend some time around there. I have ones on headaches. I have one on ones on the dowagers, hump, scoliosis, uh, hip pain, etc. So just navigate my YouTube channel if you'd like. So that I thought would be um, a, a, a useful resource. And um, if anybody is interested in anything I've had to say on a professional level, uh, in, the, in the comments as well is a 50% off initial visit in my office. Uh, pardon me. Uh, yeah, 50% 50, 50 off. So if you follow the link, there is three ways you can actually access that 50% off. So a First visit is about half an hour. We do our testing of which I explained how I analyze what the body is saying to me. We do very, very gentle form of chiropractic. Um, I have people who say your energy just is fantastic, uh, Dr. Laura. And even with very, very light touch, I feel my body calming down. And that's the goal of chiropractic is move the spine, brain calms, body calms body calms down. So it's 50% off. You can either call uh, that number there. You can write it down. You can mention Dr. Laura spinning and weaving talk and my assistants, Nikki and Tiffany will be glad to book you in. Um, my office is on Queens Ave. So it is 533 Queens Ave. So it's Queens and William right downtown, heaps of parking, accessible, main level, um, Sometimes I work on an upper floor, but it's a beautiful old home. You can click on that link there. Now that link is uh, in the comments or will be, and you can click on it. will take you right to an online booking. If you're not able to navigate or don't want to navigate the internet, just email. Um, you can see at the bottom admin at Campbell CC. So Campbell Care Chiropractic, CampbellCC.com. And my latest will... Uh, be able to accommodate. So during that first visit, I explain, I adjust, I explain what I found. I uh, adjust you. And again, I'm a very, very gentle adjuster. I do with my hands. I do with the type of instrument. I do with very, very, very gentle force. Um, again, I, I am the most gentle adjuster in our office. Many people are gravitated to that more energetic work. And then on a separate day, I'd have you come back. I say, this is what I found. This is how I can help. And I really create a, plot, a unique plan for you to help you get what you want. And remember I asked people, so fill in the, fill in the blank. So I can, so I can sleep, so I can spin again. So I can um, carry my groceries, so I can relax and not feel stiff. So I can trust my body again. So I can, you know, hike Kilimanjaro. I don't know, I don't know. Um, so those are the ways you can access. And also I'm gonna be giving the link in an email that I'm gonna send around. It's gonna be on the website for members only. So oh, it's a two week, it's a two week offer. So two weeks from today, whatever that date is, I don't know what the date is, but two weeks today. And I'm happy to, I work, uh, gosh, the only days I don't work are Tuesday. I filled in for my friend today who is, uh, was hurt her back. So I did work today. So the only days I don't work are Tuesdays and Sundays. I work three Saturdays a month. So the journey is yours. I mean, every step, be, every journey begins with the first step. 
and that can um, and I'm here just to help navigate that journey if you have if you want to take the journey with me I tell patients all the time Dr. Laura I'm in, uh, well I say patients I'm in it to win it with you I mean I always we celebrate small wins I've been uh, I've had patients right since the beginning and people like Dr. Laura people still come to you 18 years after you've been a chiropractor can't you fix her back and I say well it's more again it's, it's pattern work how the nervous system deals with stress and stress is ongoing I wouldn't be I wouldn't be where I was so I'm 46 and my birthday was two, two weeks ago a week and a half ago I get adjusted twice a week twice to three times a week people said I didn't know you had a sore back Dr. Laura I said I don't that's not why I go but I want my brain to be able, a happy happy spine that moves is a happy brain and I deal with stress better and I'm a better person in my life for it. That's why I get adjusted twice a week. I know. So let me stop the share here. And did I stop my share? Yes, you can see my face again. Okay. Um, I hope that was beneficial. I hope people learned. I hope people took away some points. I hope there, if there's questions, let's be mindful of time. If there's questions, I will take a few or even some comments. Maybe maybe one thing you learned that you're like, I had no idea that's about chiropractic. Um, and let's just see if in the chat, fabulous. So thank you so much, Laura, for there's my YouTube exercises. Wonderful. And please navigate because I have I have a ton of videos on there, informational videos on hmm, everything from hip stretches to shoulder band work to, to how to do your sore feet to wrist pains, everything navigate, please, please, please. And that's my offer there. So let's open up the floor. Don't be shy, I don't bite. Is there any comments maybe? Not a one. Okay, quiet group. Laura, I'd like to ask, um, um, how does um, arthritis fit into this picture? Mm, yeah, sure, great question. And your question is, uh, Linda? Yes. Yes, so arthritis is, remember the A and the M and the D. Arthritis is the D, okay? So arthritis means we haven't had proper motion and alignment for years of time so damage the body has uh said i'm not moving and i'm gonna create less motion and i'm going to on the bones make uh extra bone so i i can help with motion and alignment the damage that's done is done but i don't want to paint a bleak picture um any motion in the spine at any point of time is it is uh, welcomed and arthritis is is simply the joint space between the bones has gotten shorter and smaller and the disc has gotten dried out the body is, is if we go back it's been lost that alignment it has to have lost that alignment it has to like there's rubbing 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 for a period of time alignment motion damage over time there's absolutely things we can do again very very gentle we're not going to um, uh, get all the motion back that was lost 25 years ago, but motion is information. So if we're in a, in a pain loop for a period of, for a long time, which is what happens, chronic pain, perhaps that's where you're going with this, but chronic pain is because um, we haven't got new information into the brain. So, um, and uh, arthritis is not just at the back, but usually if you have arthritis in the neck, you then have it all the way through the spine. But people are like, well, I think I have it here. I can tell you without even looking at the action, most likely we have it throughout. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if that answers the question. I hope it did. Does that apply to arthritis in other parts of your body? For example, <laughs> I have it in my hands and my elbows and my toes. Yeah, yeah. Yep, and for sure, alignment, motion, damage over time. Yeah, and I mean, it can be hereditary, but here. yeah mine is yeah but we don't want to say oh because my mom had and my dad that my my father has hands that are like this um he has a, a contracture here so 
and it's uh, it, there's part of hereditary, but there's still things, no matter the age, we can still either slow the progression from getting da -da 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 -da. I don't know if we can reverse it 100% turn that clock back, but we can surely st stop that progression even 10%. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Oh, you're welcome. Does anybody else have a question or a comment even? I'd love some feedback. Beth, did you have a question before? Okay, unmuted. That's okay. part of the issue is how, how to uh, manage. Thank you so much. This was, I feel like my brain was adjusted and it's, uh, and it's firing on different. Um, as, as I get older, I have decided, I, I am interested as many of us are in many things. So I have a garden and I play the piano and I uh, spin and I blah, blah, blah. blah. And uh, I have felt that probably what I should do is drop one or two or really lessen the involvement, particularly of my fingers and forearms, which uh, get sore um, before I get to a point where uh, I'm in pain. Mm -hmm. And um, I'd, I'd love to have your comment on that. And also to say, this was very enlightening. I, I enjoyed uh, every bit of you uh, oh. and your talk. So I'll, I'll be linking. Uh, super good. You know, uh, I mean, it's it, things we enjoy, we don't want to take away from, I say, where, how we live our life, I, I don't want to stop people from going to the gym, or, or let's just say working out or enjoying their garden, or um, even thinking about, I should stop before I get in pain. Let's just, again, words, let's strengthen this body for the climb or to enjoy my life. So the, I have control. Oh, I'm speaking, you know, not as a chiropractor, just as a person, I have control over what I put in my body, how I think, how I watch, who, who I hang around with, how I spend my energy. I have control over this. I can't control the, the weather, the negativity, right? But I can strengthen this body, 46 years old, for the climb of life. So I, I guess that would be my comment there because engaging yes of course you can overdo it and you can think oh my gosh i've even i do right i did so i try to pack too much into that day um actually there's a there's a prayer i'm just gonna go to my phone because there's a prayer i say every day and here it is it is hmm, hang on spirit of truth i thank you that i have an abundance of time to accomplish all that i need today calmly peacefully with unhurried grace so I say that every day. Um, I don't know if that was, I don't know, I just felt called to say that right now. But um, there are absolutely days where you overdo it and you just have to listen to your body. So maybe, you know, doing the, the things you enjoy, spacing them, oh, don't stop to do them. Like I said, that piano, anything cross body and let me, so if I'm knitting and I do this, the brain loves that. If you are pianoing, the, the, these are Sudoku, anything, um, you, badminton, tennis, any, the, I don't play, uh, what's a uh, pickleball, but anything that you have to cross the body, that brain absolutely loves, loves, loves. So don't, don't stop. I would say spread out. So if you do your piano Monday, Wednesday, Friday, you do your garden in this day, uh, you know, variety is the body loves variety. So don't when we stop that motion you know, yeah, yeah. So, mm -hmm. thank anyway, you yeah thank great you comments uh-huh is there anybody else um okay. i would just like to say that i do chiropractic on a regular basis mm -hmm. and when i started i wasn't able to bend and do my gardens because my back was so bad and now I can garden for hours at a time. I can do everything that I want to do. And it's a matter of, and people say, oh, well, you start the chiropractor, you have to keep going. Yeah, I do, because it makes me able to do what I want to do. Yeah, just like, thank you for that comment. That's uh, wonderful that you can have the awareness to, to say, I, 
I'm a better person because I'm more flexible. And that means so I can, right? There's that sense. So I can garden and that brings joy into my life. So I can. And I mean, we always brush our teeth. We always will eat, eat a healthy. It's not like skipping dessert once and I'm healthy, right? It's my choice. People have, I see people have come see me for 18 years regularly, once a week, every two weeks. Stress still is here. We can't take away the stress. I got to work on this and work on this. And that's when a spine that moves. So yeah, it, I mean, I say people can stay with me as long or as little as they want. If we want to stay five visits, fabulous. If they want to stay 105 visits, I'm with them. But you do see a difference in bodies when people stay and, and you, you know, my body does better when I, uh, when my spine moves and my brain gets triggered and on like, mm -hmm. so thanks for that. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. well it was just a joy to contribute and um and please my resources are there i'm going to be sending a, around some um uh synopsis of what i talked about and my my presentation is going to be on your website for members only my links are there that's me mm, thank you I want to